Hey guys, this is Logan Murphy, and today we're going to be learning declaration of memory and printing that memory. Um, I'm going to present the the standard way of uh, declaring memory in Java. And just so you know, what I'm doing here is called a comment. I do these double slashes, and it stops this whole line from being read as Java code. Um, anything that follows these double uh, slashes is not recognized as Java code, so I won't have any problems or errors. Uh, the general form of declaring a Java type, Java uh, memory is declaring the type followed by the name of the memory uh, and equaling that to the value of the memory. So let me give you an example of that. I'm going to use a common Java type called int and I'm going to name it Let's say num because we're working with our numerator cl our faction class and we're going to equal it to 5. So as you see things line up int type num name 5 value. Uh, there's also this way of declaring you can say int uh, den short for denominator den equals 10. Okay. You can also do int a b c d declare multiple storage cells on one line. We can even set some of them. And set the other ones later if we wanted to. We can do this so you can see that C can be declared later. Doesn't matter which ones you set. You don't have to set them all. You, can, you don't have to set any. You can set them all. Um, this one, as you saw, I declared this memory cell as an int, and then I declared its value. I set its value. Um, so, just to give you the general form of this one, it looks like type name a name b dot 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 name n semicolon. Just 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 saying that. You, de you can declare as many as you want on one line as long as they're separated by commas as you see they are here and the last one is followed by a semicolon they're fine you can set their value um, you can set this value um, as long as they're comma separated between name and value name value comma name value comma name comma name value semicolon um, it'll be fine to read uh, so we have a storage uh, there's another common type called string s and to set the data stored in s you have to use these quotation marks and anything that goes in these quotation marks will be stored at s so you could type something like um, your numerator is what that is what that does is everything that's inside these quotes is stored inside of s just so you know s is just a um just like a just words or letters just symbols in general like space and and colon it's able to store a bunch of um symbols um so we have a storage and you got to ask yourself how do you print it uh we use the command system dot out dot print and we can put in variables for this and what this says is it tells the computer to print num to the console that's down here um, that it'll print it and we can also put s a string so this will tell the computer to put in the console um, put, change the order of this s What's stored in S? Your numerator is. So let's just start building our console here. Let's pretend that this is our console right now. And so far, system that out that print S will print out your numerator is. Then I'll do system out print num. Num is five, so it'll print five. But there's also another command we can use. And it's system that out that print line. And after it prints num, it'll print a new line for us to write on. And the next thing we want to look at is passing in literal values to the print 
function. Uh, your denominator is. So we passed in a little sh literal string value and we passed in, let's say 10. We passed in 10 as our denominator. So now this will print this string, not the quote, and 10 followed by a new line because we used the print line function again. So let's try let's save it and run this program and see if we get the right result. And it says your numerator is 5, your denominator is 10. Okay, so we got our result. And now I want to give you some more guidelines on naming. When you're naming things, you got to remember that um, each name can only exist um, once in scope. Which means wherever you declared the type of a storage cell, wherever you declared a storage cell, that before you get to this closing brace, you cannot redeclare that storage cell. So for example, I can't say string num equals um, wrong. Because it'll say num is a duplicate. Because num is an int. We can't just change the type of num to a string. That's illegal. Um, but you're probably just saying, why don't we just do what we do here? Int then, get rid of the int, and see if that works. But now we're trying to say, sh store a string inside integer storage. That's illegal as well. You can't store... The, a different type in a different type of storage. This storage is meant for ints and this is a string uh, variable, a, a string um, value you can't store inside an int. So that's wrong. Um, so that's another thing you have to look out for. Name and type to make sure that your um, you match, your type matches. So since uh, since den num is 5 and den is 10, you can say den equals num, which says take the storage in num, which is 5, and put it in den, and then den becomes 5. Okay, so you can set storage cells equal to storage cells, and it just takes the storage from this cell and put it in that cell. Alright, um, so what if you wanted to change this program so that it didn't say 5 and 10? Um, you'd have to change these literal values, 5 and 10, and every time you want to change it, you have to change it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So what we want to do in our next tutorial is figure out a way to ask the user how to which numbers they want to use, because they're the ones who know what the fraction they want to use. So we're going to ask the user what's the fraction they want to use in the next tutorial. So I'm Logan Murphy. I'll see you next time. Peace.